everyone, my name is Jenny. Welcome to Homeschool Teens with Jenny. Today I had a viewer question on the Beautiful Feet World Geography and Ecology course. And so today I am gonna walk you through a little bit of the teacher guide and show you guys what we have chosen to use, what we haven't chosen to use. We have made it through lesson 16. We are halfway through Africa. We've been doing this for about 10 weeks now and we've really had a lot of fun with it. So I am gonna turn the camera around and show you guys the different components we have used just in the first 10 weeks. I'm gonna show you the mapping activities, some of the books that we've used and if you have any questions at the end or as we go through the video, just leave them in the comment section below and I'll be happy to get back with you at the end. So I hope you guys enjoy. Here we are with the Beautiful Feet World Geography and Ecology course. I had several questions come up from a few of you guys and so I wanted to address those. We have been in this program for nine weeks and so I can kind of show you what we've done in nine weeks. And as we go through maybe in quarter increments, I can kind of share with you at the end of each quarter um, in this curriculum, how things have gone and the assignments we've been given so that you kind of have an idea of how to facilitate this throughout the year. But we'll start at the table of contents. We basically are in part one and two. Part one starts out with what is ecology, why do we study it? What does it have to do with geography? And so during that time, you will use this book here. And when these pages are assigned, they're typically only two pages. So it might just be a spread like this. We talked about uh, levels of organization in ecology. We looked at the biome map and figured out what region um, we lived in and what biome matched our region. So that was really fun. So you'll go through and use some of it, not all of it. You use it throughout the year, but it's heavy on ecology. Another thing is the junk drawer ecology book. And basically this book is all about projects. So if you have a student who's really interested in hands-on projects, this book comes with directions along with pictures and we've done a few things in here like the food web, but we are really restricted on time for doing too much extra hands-on because it requires a lot of supplies and then uh, prep time. And right now I'm hosting Chem Lab, um, not only for our family, but another family's joining us. And I'm responsible for those supplies and that lab. So you have to, when you're using these courses, you have to kind of set boundaries for yourself and be reasonable with how much time you have and what you are and are not able to do. And there is nothing wrong with that. This curriculum is extremely flexible. You can do as little or as much as you want, and you can choose to not do the hands-on, but still get a whole lot out of the course, which is what we've chosen to do. So there's a lot of beginnings here, but you'll get into part one. They give you a QR code. You download the file and you just keep it on your laptop or desktop and you refer to it throughout the course. And so whenever they give you a link to a YouTube video or a website or anything, you open up that document and you click on the link that you need. It is broken down by lessons. So here, if you're on lesson one, you just go to the lesson one section of the document. And here there was a Khan Academy link. And so I opened the document, I found this link and clicked on it without having to type anything in. Very easy to do. And so um, I have found that the guide is very helpful on that. It saves time so you're not just typing all this out. You just click and go. There's only been a few links that have not worked or have expired, but most of the links have worked that we've used. Okay, I'm flipping back here because I wanted to show you guys what all the colors meant. Blue is geography, green is ecology, orange is activity, and red is story. And then if you see this, it means there's an internet link that's included in the lesson. It'll also show you the key. If you have this symbol, you have an internet link. If you have this symbol, you have research that you'll be doing. And if you have this symbol, this is just a parental warning that you'll wanna read prior to assigning it to your child. 
So that's what all the colors mean. And you can see very clearly on the side what the categories will be for that lesson. Each lesson takes us about two to four days. It just depends on what's in it and what we choose to do. So the first whole unit for one is the ecology part. And so you're going through and learning about that. At the very end, they will tell you to pull out this really big map that takes up a lot of space. We love it. It takes up almost all my kitchen table. And what you have to do is you can color, you can watercolor and paint. My daughter chose to watercolor all of the water blue so she could see the land um, versus the water. And then we had to go around and label all of the continents and all of the oceans. And so that was the first assignment. As you can see now, we're working on Africa and they do about three countries um, a week or a, a lesson. And so you work just a little at a time to get through. By the end of the year, they will actually label every single country in the entire world, which I just think is so cool. So part two, you're getting into Africa. And so we are still in this part. We are about halfway through Africa. We've done the eastern side and the southern side. We're working our way over to the western side and northern Africa. So the first thing, they have rabbit trails. So if you're really interested in Africa or your student wants more reading, those choices are there for you. You will start out and it will tell you the materials you need for your lesson. And so when you get into more of the geography part of this, I was gonna show you the two main books we use or have used so far. I'll get to that one in just a minute. Let's start with the DK Student Atlas. This is so well done and they will tell you what page to go to. This is the one we've really been working on the most uh, since we're in Africa. We have read through the spread and my daughter is using this map to identify where the countries are and label them, make sure they're spelled correctly, all that good stuff. So you will use this quite a bit as a reference. The Book of Nations is actually referred to in here as an optional supplement. I bought this book just because it's beautiful. <laughs> and it has every country in the world in it. And it's just so cool. It's divided into continents. So Africa's first. And you can see you'll have a whole spread for one country. They'll tell you the flag and where it is in Africa and all the facts. And then sometimes they do include beautiful pictures as well. But you can see we just use this. Whatever countries we're labeling, we flip in this book to and just learn a little more about them. So that's what that is. So here you'll see geography, you'll see the story, and you'll see the supplement, which is um, the Book of Nations that I just showed you. Another thing they do, which is the story section, is every time you're on a continent, they will pull a book that has something to do with the area you're studying. It just makes geography come to life. This was actually based on a true story. Um, this was in Malawi, and that was the first country that Josie labeled and learned about, which was really cool. And so she only has one chapter left in here, um, but it has been a, it's been an easy read. She did say sometimes the chapters are really long, but um, she has enjoyed it. And I love that it's based on a true story. There's a film we could watch. There's all sorts of things we could do with this, but she has enjoyed this one. And like I said, this took place in Malawi. Coming up, she has just labeled Sudan and South Sudan and learned about the country splitting and things like that. And this book, The Red Pencil, uh, the setting is in Sudan. So this will be the new book and it's written in verse. I've never read a book like this, but um, that's the next one that she'll be doing. So that is the story section that will have books all throughout like that, that are on in the settings of the books will be the same as the areas you are studying. So geography, you always are labeling typically three to four countries per lesson. You'll also look in the Book of Nations and learn about them. And there's always typically links to YouTube channels or websites. The websites, they will give you um, 
things like quizzes where you can quiz yourself on where all the countries are on the continent and you can try to beat your score. It's like in a game format and Josie loves that. She's had a great time. Um, I will pick one or two videos that we can watch that week um, in addition to labeling the countries. We are reading all of the literature that goes along with this because I can pour that into her language arts. And they do have discussion questions. One of the questions from you guys was, what do you do? How do you assign reading and discuss it? Um, and so what I do is I do assign the reading to my student. I do not choose to read these aloud um, just because of the load that's already on me. And she's perfectly capable in ninth grade of doing that. If she was younger, I might rethink that. But here she will read the assignment and then um, afterwards, they do have discussion questions and quotes and things. They even have Bible verses to reference to compare what's going on in the story to uh, a biblical worldview, which I think is fantastic. I do not always get to these questions. I will just be blunt and honest with you. We haven't done a lot of the questions together. Um, I plan to change that. It's just been a very hectic first quarter in our homeschool, and I just haven't had the time. But this is something I do plan to pick up with her, not obviously in this book since she's almost done, but uh, we will be discussing these after she reads after each assignment. Um, I break these lessons down into two to four days, depending on what's required. The first day we always label the countries and we always read the Book of Nations. The second day, I typically will pick some YouTube channels or websites to look at or to read about. The third day, we will typically do the story. And if we have a fourth day, it's some kind of project that we actually want to do. Sometimes we do choose to. So for this one, you'll see here we go with four countries here. Then you have a little ecology section. And so you've got some YouTube channel um, links. You've got the Wondrous Workings book, which is this one. And you just pick and choose what fits for your schedule and your time frame. There is an activity here that you could do in the Junk Drawer Ecology book. You have your story. And within the story, um, we are defining different terms. And I do have her do that on a just a piece of notebook paper. We're just kind of keeping a... Um, section in her folder of all the things that she does for this class. So that is an example of how we break it down. So you'll see, you'll go through, and we have made it all the way, let's see, yes, to lesson 16. We will be wrapping this up tomorrow, actually. And so she'll finish The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind tomorrow. Um, she is done uh, with South Sudan and Sudan, which means we still have Egypt and Libya. We'll be learning about the Nile River. So, okay, this is actually going into when we get back from our break. She will finish The Boy Who Harnesses the Wind tomorrow. And then when we come back, she will be working on Egypt and Libya. And then she will learn about the Nile River. And if she wants to, there's um, learning about William Kumquamba's story. There's a YouTube link. Um, this is a longer interview. So there's a lot of different options of how you want to use this. She may choose that once she's done with the book, that's good. And we'll just stick to the geography and the ecology. We'll definitely be doing the Nile River here. So as you can see, <laughs> um, and I want to show you the map one more time because I just think it's so fantastic. Um, I'm actually going to flip the camera up just a little bit so that you guys can see of how it is but um it's ginormous and like i told you it takes up the whole table we just focus on a small area at a time so here's what we've done in nine weeks here so you can kind of see what you get through we'll be finishing up africa and then we'll be moving to the next continent which i believe is going to be asia is next so it has been really a fantastic a very fun course um, again, you have to just set boundaries, you know, where am I at, how much can I get done, um, and 
how can we maximize the information within the time that we have? And that's just what I have to look at. But this has been so fun. Um, it's a great way to learn uh, where you're not just reading a textbook, but you have some different resources that you can pull from and it's not the same each day. So I would just say with these, determine how many days you have for each lesson and then break down the assignments that you feel are valuable for your student and go from there. So I hope this was helpful for you guys and that is it. All right guys, so that's it for Beautiful Feats World Geography and Ecology flip through for what we have done so far. I did have a couple viewer questions, so I'm looking at those now. The first question was, are there any writing projects? And so far, there have not been any specific writing projects, but in the video, I did address how you can turn a lot of this into research and writing. Um, you could do a notebooking type format where they go through and research specific things and draw or cut out pictures and paste them in, or there's so many options for this course. You could really get creative with it. So whatever your students needs are and whatever you would like to use, it is definitely flexible for that. The second question is, does your student read and then you both discuss? So far, my student has read everything independently and then she'll tell me about the story. I have not specifically yet, and I really have wanted to, but this is a time constraint, um, used the questions in the teacher guide. They are there, the questions are there. It's very easy to either have you and your student discuss them at the end of their reading or the end of the day. It's also easy to um, type those out and give them to your student for them to answer, and then you go back and talk through them with them if you would prefer to do it that way. I have just been under a lot of pressure with the English component of our homeschool right now, especially with writing for my younger one and American Lit for my older one. They've been challenging courses and they both need them and are doing very well in them, but it requires one-on-one. -on -one. In addition to that, I am teaching them chemistry this year. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> but it's going well, we're getting through it, everybody's doing great, but it it's a lot of demand on me, as well as I don't only host my kids for the chem labs, but we have another family that joins us every week for the chem labs. So you can kind of see, you have to just set boundaries for yourself as a homeschooler. <laughs> and there's some things you can get to, and there's some things you can't, and you can't do it all, and you should not expect yourself to do it all. So you pick the things that are important to you and focus on those. If you get to some things sometimes and not at others, it's fine. Just look at what your priorities are for you and your student and go with it. This is the most flexible curriculum and it's not overwhelming. There's not a hundred choices a day of what to do. There's a few and you can break it down as you want to. We don't complete an entire lesson in just one day. Um, it takes two, three, sometimes four. So hopefully that answers the very specific viewer questions I had. If you guys have any more, just leave them below. I'll be happy to answer them and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.